This is a Fox News alert. Elon Musk has provided Matt Taibbi of Substack with thousands, apparently thousands and thousands of internal documents at Twitter. And they're coming out as we speak. We've told you this several times. Those documents prove, among other things, that the Biden campaign and the DNC directed Twitter to censor users and Twitter complied and did this in the critical final days of the 2020 election cycle in order, and they say this in their emails, to get Joe Biden elected. They did the bidding of a political party and of elected officials in Washington, which is illegal, to get Biden elected. They rigged the information available about that election. Now, that would include the former Twitter general counsel, Jim Baker, who was a key player at the FBI during the Russia collusion hoax. He was overseeing the censorship there. Just minutes ago, Elon Musk wrote on Twitter, quote, if this isn't a violation of the Constitution's First Amendment, what is? There's so much here. Other documents just posted by TV minutes ago reveal that Twitter's hacked materials policies was never a real justification for banning the New York Post reporting on Hunter Biden's laptop. And they knew it. Under Twitter's own stated rules, they would need, quote, official law enforcement finding of a hack to invoke that policy, says Taibbi. This is just one part of the Twitter files that are apparently going to come out over a period of days. We will see. But one of the things we've learned already is that Twitter, under pressure from Democrats, deleted a tweet from the legendary actor James Woods, who had straight outside the lines by criticizing Hunter Biden. The DNC told, this before the last election, told Twitter to take it down, and so they did. James Woods joins us now by phone. James Woods, are you there? Yes, I am, Tucker. So nice to talk to you. It's great to talk to you. I vaguely remember when your tweet was pulled down. You, of course, remember it. Did you suspect at the time it was pulled down at the direct request of the Democratic National Committee? I'm not surprised at all. I'm shocked uh, the way any other American would be if he were a target of a presidential candidate and a yeah. major political party. But here's why I'm not shocked. Twitter. You may, uh, uh, Chuck, you may be surprised to know that there was a lawsuit a while back. Uh, a woman uh, accused me of saying that she gave a Nazi salute, and there was a whole bunch of, of stuff about it on Twitter, and, and I didn't. I actually asked, why would somebody say that about her? Without going into the details of that lawsuit, it turned out that the DNC was behind that. I won the lawsuit in federal court. It wasn't reported very much. I've been a target of these people for six years. They have destroyed my career. They have destroyed my livelihood. They've destroyed my faith in a country that my family has defended uh, in the military since the Revolutionary War. I'm about to be inducted into Sons of, of the uh, American Revolution, the Sons of the Revolution. Um, uh, I, I cannot, I, I, you're catching me a bit off guard because I literally just walked in the door and my wife yeah. said, have you seen your phone? I was at the firing range, <laughs> believe it or not practicing Good for, for you. Uh, my rights under the Second Amendment, which I guess now that I don't have any First Amendment rights anymore, I'm glad that I still have some Second Amendment rights. I, I think yeah. the whole thing is uh, astonishing. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm for the first time in my life, honestly, speechless. Well, it is astonishing. And as you just pointed out, civil law is used extensively by the left to really crush people on the right. Alex Jones just had a billion dollar settlement against him because he said something that he didn't hurt anybody. He said something people didn't like, and they wrecked his life, but in the lives of many other people, and they tried to wreck yours. Is there some kind of legal or civil recourse that you would have against the people who violated your First Amendment rights? I can guarantee you one thing, more than anything else you'll ever hear in your life. I will be getting a lawyer. I will be suing the Democratic National Committee no matter what, whether I win or lose. I am going to stand up for the rights that every American, not a so-called celebrity, right. I'm not a celebrity, I'm hardly recognizable anymore because my career has been destroyed by these very people. And I will sue, and I'm hoping other people will sue. And if it turns out there are a lot of us on this list where the DNC targeted us, and I will quote the immortal words of Joseph Welch when he attacked Joe McCarthy for the enemies list he had, at long last, sir, have you no shame? Yes. President Biden, all of your stocky little operatives in the DNC who have targeted American citizens 
have you, Mr. President, have all of you at last no shame? Yeah. And of course, the answer is no, they don't have shame. Um, but we we will be following that. And, and there may be more. Clearly, they were fixated on you, which I hope you take as a compliment, but also propels well, you forward to bring justice. I think it is a compliment, but it's, you know, it's a big price to pay. It's not a lot of fun. I, I loved my career for 50 years. I was happy to be an award-winning yeah. and honored and appreciated actor. And uh, I missed my career. And these yeah. people took it from me. And they'll pay a price it's later in my life, you know. But I have to say, um, I am not going to take it sitting down. I think these people are vermin for doing this to other people. Let's not talk about me for a moment. Let's talk about just simple individuals who put out a tweet and now their lives are destroyed. You know, casting directors literally in my business literally go online and they check every actor who comes in for a part to see who they're following. If an actor or an actress is following me, they will blacklist them. All right? It's about time this is torn open. And I will tell you this. It's not just me. But if you take the thousands of people that I'm sure they did this to, and you got a class action suit, uh, they might not be so happy about that. They really are in trouble right now, I think. I think this will be something that will <laughs> they're not going to be happy about in the long run. And, you know, what, what am I going to get out of it? I don't know. But I'm going to sue for the – look, there was a guy who called me a cocaine addict on, on Twitter once. Never done drugs in my life. And they even stipulated, well, he was just doing it with hyperbole. I sued him. I won that suit. I won the slap judgment on that suit. So you can't talk about it because of the settlement that, that we did, much more than that. And someone said, why would you do it? I said, because I'm going to defend my name. I'm not going to let them slur, uh, slander me like this. That was libel in, in that case. But uh, there's a distinction, as you know. Uh, but I'm not going to put up with it. And if I have to be the flag bearer for this, then so be it. I'll be proud to do it. Um, we, I, I you should be say, proud. I want to say in closing, you may notice that I never talk to the press anymore. I'm asked yes. every day. Okay, I've left Twitter as my only source of, 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 of you know, of public any statement I might might make because I always say those are my words. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to alter it by doing a slow motion video of me in black and white and all that crap that they do. But but they. have They've been doing this as a jihad against conservative people. I was blocked on Twitter for eight months. You know what I was suspended for? Quoting Ralph Waldo Emerson. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's how crazy these people are. And one of the things that I said on Twitter once that has become kind of a meme, scratch a liberal and you'll find a fascist every time. Yes. Let me tell you, these Democrats, and now I can say it because they are no my enemy. They, they declared this, not me. But when they go around calling everybody, oh, this one's a fascist and so on. You know who the fascists are? Scratch a liberal and you will find a fascist every time. Every time. Well, I'm, you know, I, I realize you, you don't want to do television interviews, but you are always welcome on the show because that's one of the most amazing conversations I've had in a while. I mean, I'm, well, I'm really grateful I, I that we reached you tonight. I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm kind of, if you'll pardon the metaphor, shooting from the hip, because I, I just, I walked in the door and Sarah, my wife said, my God, have you checked your phone? I go, no, it's up at the range or up in the, I was up in the rain up in Lopez Canyon. There's not even reception there. I, I looked at my phone. I, I literally had hundreds of messages. I went, what the, what's going on? And uh, so I, I, I can't speak about this as with, with the informed consent that I would like to. And I can't speak as intelligently as, as I would like to, but, you know, when you see your name on an enemy's list, you want to say to your enemies, you know, really an interesting thing. When you declare somebody as your enemy, they can now say you're my enemy, too. And it's yes. a funny thing about the Constitution. You know, I, I tweeted something today about James Monroe. You know how old James Monroe, President of the United States, by the way, later on, you know how old he was when, um, when, when they signed the Declaration of Independence? No. He was 18 years old. 18 years old. Okay? John Adams was 19 years old. You know, they're talking about all oh, these old white men wrote the Constitution. They were <laughs> teenagers fighting 
for an independent way of life, fighting for rights, the most precious of which, the most precious of which was the right to free speech. And the government of the United States conspired to take my free speech and throw it in the gutter. And there's something that they should fear more than anything they have ever imagined in their wildest dreams. The most dangerous man to these corrupt, vile vermin is an American who's not afraid of them. And Joe Biden and all those rats who worked with you at the DNC to close down my speech. I am not afraid of you. And I'm coming for you. Amazing. What do you think of Elon Musk so far? Well, without Elon Musk, Hunter Biden would still be, and I can't say this because I don't know the fact, but it seems like he's been involved in some pretty interesting chicanery on behalf of the big guy, whoever that may be. We don't know for sure. So I don't like to say things I'm not sure of, but, you know, I, I, uh, I think Elon Musk has very possibly, very possibly saved America. I, I think the ship of state has been on a course rivaling the Titanic. And I think what Elon Musk has done is spend a lot of money like I did in that lawsuit against the guy who lied about me. You know, you spend the money and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this because it's so important to my survival and my well-being. And I think Elon Musk loves this country. It's clear that he does. Why would he spend all that money on Twitter, this rat-infested <laughs> app? You know, why would he do that unless he could see its value? You have to understand something. You know, back, back when they had the power in Twitter, the Democrats were happy to say, well, it's a private site. It's not, it's not like it's the town square. You know, they can say whatever they want. They're not saying it now that, that Elon Musk owns it. But it was, in fact, the town square. It was, in fact, a forum for free speech. And if you have a town square where only some people are allowed to use it, then you don't really have a free country. We no. know in this country what it was like when certain citizens weren't allowed to speak, when they had to step off the sidewalk because a person with different skin color was walking down the street. You know, and I'm not going to compare anything to what black people in America went through uh, because there's, there is no comparison. There is no comparison. But it's, uh, I, okay. James Woods, I, I, I don't know what to say other than thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for explaining that. And congratulations on your vindication. I hope we see you soon. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.